on, on this strange title, I want to preach on a fish, a tree, and man. A fish, a tree, and man. Everybody turn around, amen, and tell someone you're glad to have them in church today. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me ask you, amen, a question. If you took a fish out of the environment of water that it was created to live in, what would happen? It would die. The average life of a fish out of water is 10 minutes. It can sit there, and Brother Ray, he knows about this. He'd sit there and just, it can do everything, but about 10 minutes, and, and then that's it. It's out of its environment. It was created to live in the water. Take it out of the water, and it dies. A tree taken out of the ground or the natural environment from which it was created to live, what would happen if you took a tree and shook all the dirt off of it and just laid it over with its roots on the ground. Anybody know what's going to happen? It's going to die. It actually lives for about a month on average, taking all trees. If you'll fall, if, you just, if it gets ripped up by a tornado, we've seen trees just ripped up and the roots are just everywhere, right? That just fell over by a big wind and what have you. About a month, it can still, it can still produce fruit and leaves and do everything that's supposed to do for about a month. It has a Months worth of water and sap in its, in its trunk to survive. But after a month, that, that tree that was designed to live in the earth, when it's taken out of its environment, it's going to die. Amen. But we consider mankind. Man was formed from the dust of the ground. And at that point, it was just a body without life. Amen. Brother Victor, it was just a, a human shell. It was a, a human body. But the life came into that man when the breath of God and the Spirit of God breathed into the nostrils of man and the Spirit of God breathed upon man caused that man to become a living soul. Ooh, hallelujah. Amen. Man was not living. Man had no breath without the presence of God. It was the presence of God that caused the man, the flesh, to rise up. And when he did, he didn't become a living man. Ooh. He wasn't a living human being. The Bible says that when God breathed into him, he became a living soul. Glory to God. He was born in the environment of the presence of God. Man was designed to be in the presence of the Lord. Man was created, amen, to have the breath of God or the spirit of God in his human body. And if you take a fish out of water, it's going to die. If you take a tree out of the ground, it's going to die. And if you take the Spirit of God out of a man, he's going to die. The Bible said the Lord told them about the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. In the day that thou eat it, thou shalt surely die. I'm going to talk to us. How about a fish, a tree, and a man? Because neither one of them can live outside of the environment in which God created them to be. Oh, hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Amen. Sin entered in the body. 
Amen. And we realize that the Spirit of God moved out of man. And man now was on his own. And from Adam until now. Amen. The tussle and the struggle and the toil of all mankind. Is that man is trying to live outside of the environment in which he was created. A fish has ten minutes and a tree has a month. But man can only live so long without the eternal presence of God. Today, we, we have to have the spirit of the almighty living in us. Because you've heard me say this before. I'll say it again. That man in the garden was eternal. God created this human body. And the cells to regenerate itself. And to live forever. Without sin. Man would have never died. Right? Man would have never died. He would still, Adam would still be kicking and breathing right now. Amen? Had not sin entered into the world. It was a powerful thing. It's only sin. Lust hath conceived. When, right? The Bible said when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth what? Sin. And when sin is finished, it bringeth forth what? Death. The only reason why we have death and the only reason why we have sickness is because of sin. We are living outside of the environment in which God designed the human body and the eternal soul to live. Jesus was without sin. In him was no variableness, no shadow of turning. He was perfect. He was tempted in every way as we are. Yet Jesus was without sin. Sin. Therefore, the man, the body, the shell, the incarnation of God was eternal. And when Jesus was walking on the earth, he was eternal. At that moment, at that time, death hadn't entered into him. And therefore, Jesus, being eternal, lets us know the power of a man that, it, that God put within man, a man when he has no sin. Man when he has no sin can say, hey, I don't feel like swimming today. I'm going to walk on water. And he walks on water. That's the ability of a man without sin. A man without sin says, I'm hungry. Give me some bread. And he breaks it and he multiplies it. Jesus said, greater works than these that you do shall, I, shall you also do. You understand? The things that Jesus did, we can do also without sin. But we have this incarnation of sin. But the Bible says, and we're going to learn about it next week. Amen. The scripture says that he became sin for us. And he took upon him the sin of the whole world. And because he took upon him, amen, the sin of the whole world. Amen. It was the sin of all mankind. You understand? But I'm telling you right now that God is getting us ready to go back to the place and the environment that He created us. The Bible says we're going to be we're going to have a new heaven and a new earth, and we're going to be given a new body. This corruptible shall put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And for the first time in our life in a new body we're going to get back like the fish in the water and the tree in the dirt we're going to go back to the presence of God and we're going to live and dwell and have our being in the way that God created us today amen we're more than a fish we're more than a tree we are a man created in the image of God and we are designed to be in the presence of God oh hallelujah today in the presence of the almighty I know it's on our mind. Let me speak very respectfully today of Sister Roy. Sister Roy is now, at this moment, back where she's supposed to be, in the presence of God. I don't know what all she knows. I don't know what all she can see. 
I don't know understanding of what's beyond the here and now. But I do know she fought a good fight. She had finished her course and she kept the faith. And God put her back in the place where he designed her to be. Check, check, check. Over this way. It's, it's the uh, batteries. It's blinking red. In the presence of the Lord. Amen. Where she belongs today. Amen. Designed to be. Amen. With him today. I've come to tell you. Amen. It is my desire. It is my longing and my ambition to be in the presence of God. We were created to be with him forever in his presence. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. In his presence today. Amen. That that law, amen, that, that could not keep us from the, the law that kept us, that the law that could not keep us, amen, uh, and, and a God that had no fellowship with us. The element of his spirit was missing. We were created to live in a garden of paradise with the breath of God and daily fellowship. Amen with him. For this reason is our purpose. And for this reason was it we created. We were created out of the love of God. You hear me? It was the love of God that created us. Our purpose today he man uh, is the sharing of God's love in us. Brother McLean taught a lesson a few weeks ago, and my mind still keeps going back. What a beautiful Sunday school lesson on love that Brother McLean, and, and I hope that we recorded it. If we did, we, you should go back and listen to that. People were created, amen, for two things, to love God and to love one another. Amen. This is the environment in which we're supposed to be. This is the environment in which God created us to love Him and to love one another. They asked Jesus one day and said, which is the greatest of these? and Which is the greatest commandment? And Jesus said, to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. For upon these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Jesus said, you want to know why you're here? Love me and love one another. But sin today even separated us from the love of God. And sin separates the hatred that we have for one another today. It's all because of the culprit of sin. We are living outside of him. Man is a fish and gills given this on the bank trying to survive outside the water. It struggles and its full capacity and potential. Amen. It's not there. It's out of its environment. It's a tree laying over with even good perfect weather and perfect rain and the perfect environment. Amen. We'll only lay for a little while and then it begins to shrivel up. And after our lives, amen, we try to live and breathe in this world. But without the presence of God, without the glory of His power to make us eternal, amen, we are eventually going to give up and our gills are going to stop and our branches are going to wither amen and we're going to die but I've come to tell you that doesn't have to be the end of my story I'm not a fish and I'm not a tree but I am a man in which God puts his spirit in me Hallelujah. spirit of God makes us amen to be perfect fellowship with him we need the Holy Ghost we need the spirit of God we must if we're going to survive eternity, be born again, Brother Roy. Because our first birth wasn't good enough. But our second birth is what's going to get us in the glory. We must be born again. Our in element or our environment in which we was created. Amen. The only way to get the fish to live is put it back in the water. And the only way to get the fruit tree to produce is to put it back in the ground. And the only way we'll ever truly have the fullness of our being is to get our eternal soul that was breathed. Amen. From God back. To God. That is the purpose of which we are here today. We need His presence. 
moving and flowing in our lives. The Bible says, listen to this, Job 33 and 4. If we could get that one. The scripture says this. The Spirit of God hath made me. And the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. You hear me now? Amen. We must have the presence of God in our lives. We truly are not enjoying life as life ought to be until we are filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Jesus came and was buried and died and rose again and sent His Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost that we might have the reconnection between him and God between God and man that we lost in the garden of Eden the first man Adam messed it up but the second man Adam brought redemption and life today the spirit of God hath made me and the breath of the almighty hath given me life his spirit given me and his breath made me John chapter 22 if we could get that one John 20 and 22 and when he had said this He breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 2 and verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord and in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them cloven tongues like as a fire that sat upon each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost with the Roy and began to speak with other other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them the utterance. The Bible says that the sound of heaven of a rushing mighty wind. I looked up the phrase mighty wind. The word mighty wind there means a man, a breeze. A breath, a wind, or to breathe hard. A rushing mighty wind means to breathe hard. Amen. The sound of the Holy Ghost come in. Come on, somebody. And God... uh, Breathe into Adam and Adam become a living soul because of the breath of God. Breathe into his nostrils. Man did not become a living being. He become a living soul. And from sin separated us from God. And he died after he was disobedient to God. And from that time forward until now, every human Being that has been born is born stone cold dead. Your soul is dead the moment you conceived in your mother's womb. And your soul is dead under the day you die or unless you come in. And you become be filled with the Holy Ghost. And when you are filled with the Holy Ghost, even you become alive in Christ. The Bible said He hath made us alive in Him. What are you talking about? My dead soul now becomes a living soul only by the presence of God. And I put back in the environment by which I was. A mighty wind, a breath. Romans 8, can we get Romans 8 and 9? The Bible says, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. And if so be that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Now if any man hath not the Spirit of Christ, oh boy, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, The body, listen, you see that? And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. The human being, your body is dead. But the spirit, (laughs) but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Come on, somebody. 
Some folks will say, you don't need the Holy Ghost. You don't need the Spirit of God. You are living like a fish out of water without the Holy Ghost. You are a tree outside the dirt without the Holy Ghost. Amen. You need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It is Christ in you. Why do you think Jesus said it's being born again? Nicodemus came to him. Amen. Good master, how shall I see or even enter into the kingdom of God? And Jesus looked at Nicodemus and said, Ye must be born again. John chapter 3. And he looked at him and said, How can can I be born again? Can I enter the second time unto my mother's womb and be born? Jesus looked at a dead soul and he spoke to the dead soul and he said to that dead soul, No, sir, even ye must be born again of the water and of the spirit, even to enter into the kingdom of God. That which is flesh is flesh, but that which is spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto you. You must be born again. Woo, hallelujah. Because your first birth wasn't enough. Because you were still born with a dead soul. In a human body. Outside of the environment by which I created you. But it's now time that we live in Christ. Listen to this. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 13. Woo! Hallelujah. 1 John 4 13. And hereby we know that we dwell in Him and He in us because He hath given us His Spirit. Whew. Let me tell you, it's my cry. Just a minute, if you come, I'm not going to keep us long today. It is my cry, it is my call, it is my prayer, for the Ramirez, it is my longing, it is every fiber of my being that I receive the Holy Ghost and that I maintain fellowship with God and keep the presence of God moving and active in my life. I do not want to live one day. I will not live one day without the presence of God. In open and blatant disobedience to the laws of God and the commandments of God. Does it mean you're perfect all the time, Brother Mills? Come live with me for about a week. You'll see how unperfect I am. You're like, my God, and you're pastoring? All right? I'm being honest. I get mad and upset and disapp disappointed and, you know, just uh, really crazy driver. But here's what I refuse to do. I refuse to know where God's line is of commandments. Right? And deliberately say in my mind, I know God doesn't want me to. I don't know. I know that's where it is, but pff, whatever. Whatever. And walk away. And in my heart knowing I'm leaving God over there. And I'm going over here. And I'm just going to do my thing. I'm just going to do my thing. In the back of my mind saying, hey, he's a merciful God. And when I'm ready, when I'm ready for Brother Victor, I'll run back over here and shimmy, shimmy, shy. It didn't work that way, folks. I'm not saying that we have a swinging doors in our soul and the Holy Ghost comes and goes. I'm not saying that. But I am saying this. We grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Grieve it not. What, 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 what do you say, Brother Mills? What I'm saying is being filled with His Spirit is where we were created to be. The living soul. Why in the world would I want to jump out of the water and flap my gills in an environment God didn't create me to be in? Right? And I see some people in their lives and their whole life is given this number, just doing everything they can 
to survive deliberately outside the plan of God. Do it on my own. And I'm not doing a very good job, but I'm it's like that fish. You see, you know what fishing? I'm not a I'm not a fisherman. I wish Brother Ray was here. But but I've seen enough videos of fish. Well, just put it on a bass. Have you ever seen the red part on the inside of the gills of a fish? Of a bass, the big red, I don't know what they're called. I'm sure they got a name. I've seen enough videos, Sister Sana. When a bass is in the water, I've never seen that. I've never seen the gills open up that big on a fish when it's in the water. It just barely has to. I mean, you don't even see them gills moving. I mean, it's just barely moving. Why? That was the environment from which it was created. But you take that thing and flop it over there on the deck, over on that boat, over on the bank, and those little gills that just barely had to do this to survive. It's getting the distance. It's trying. That, that's the only thing it knows how to get oxygen. Hard. It's out of its environment. And some folks, that's right, Brother Roy, the way of a transgressor is hard. God designed me to be in his presence. And some people their whole life, I don't need God. I don't need God. I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to do it without him. No. Sister Rose, I think I'll just stay over on this side where I was created in His presence. Do you mess up over here? Am I living and breathing? Listen to what the Bible says. The Lord told the prophet, go down to the potter's house and watch how he rots the work on the wheel. For in the potter is his clay, that is Israel. And the Lord told him, I am the potter. Do you know what happens? The prophet went down there and looked at the potter. And the Bible says this. I, 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 I saw the potter and the clay upon the wheel. And the clay marred in the hands of the potter. It messed up with his hands on it. It messed up. But you know what did not happen? He didn't pick it up off the wheel and bunch it together, open up the window and chunk it out into the yard. The Bible says, and he done a work unto it and wrought or made it again. Everybody say another. Another vessel that seemeth good unto the potter to make it. What are you saying, Brother Mills? I'm the pottery in the potter's hands. And sometimes in his hands, we still mess up. But God doesn't chunk us out the window. No. He just keeps working until he makes it the thing that it needs to be that seemeth good to the potter to make it. Let me tell you something. You mess up out on the bank, you're on your own. If I'm going to mess up, let me mess up in the potter's house. Right? Where's the best place to get sick? In the hospital. Where's the best place to be safe? In a fortress. Right? I was designed to be in the presence of God. 